I wanted to make an announcement on a video. Um, the HVACR Tools YouTube channel is now live and active. Myself and the overtime crew, Adam, Joe, and Bill, are going to be doing tool reviews on that channel, not to mess with the vibe of this channel. So you'll see full tool reviews on the HVACR Tools YouTube channel. There'll be a link in the show notes um, of this video. Uh, but please go check it out. You can also follow us on our social media platforms on Facebook, uh, Instagram. Uh, it's HVACR Tools. It's simple as that, okay? So please go check it out and give us some support. We want to try to build that channel up and grow it. Um, and, uh, you know, you guys can give us a hand. All right. Also, if you haven't already, check out my website, hvacrvideos.com, uh, merch available on there and, uh, you can help to support the channel that way. So this video that I'm going to play today is actually a recorded video from back in June of 2020. So that'll make sense as to why we're in March and I'm talking about 96 degree temperatures. Although here in Southern California, I expect us to hit 96 degree temperatures within a, a month or so, but we're still kind of tailing off from our, our fake 50 degree winter right now. So um, that should give you some context. Let's get on with the video. This video is brought to you by Sportland. Quality, integrity, and tradition. Look at these filters. Completely plugged. Last change, February. Look at these ones. These ACs all need to be cleaned badly, but yeah, these are plugged too. All right, we are having cooling complaints with the ACs. We've got a kitchen. Well, the whole entire kitchen's hot is what they're telling us, so. Uh, I was here yesterday working on a glycol unit and I came up here, you notice it's dirty, but it's really dirty inside. So I came up yesterday, actually did it again. This stage is not running. I can feel cool air blowing out of there and hot air blowing out of here. So that indicates to me that we've got one compressor that is down. So I reset it yesterday temporarily um, and got, the, got it running, but I don't know how long it lasted. But today, we're gonna start by cleaning the unit just because I know it needs to be clean. Uh, I pulled the filters out yesterday. So we're gonna do this for two different ACs. We've got an office AC right here too. Um, it's not horrendous, but it's actually pretty dirty. It's just got grease all over it. So we're gonna clean and sanitize the evaporator. We're gonna clean this unit up. We'll get them a list of things. They obviously need a metal mesh filter. And then also, yesterday I found that this uh, evaporative cooler, the makeup air for the kitchen, the water pump wasn't running. Well, actually the water pump was running, but what happened was the pump basket, and I'll show it a little bit later, the pump basket was all dirty, so it wasn't allowing any water to get to the pump itself. So I just pulled it out, cleaned the basket quickly, not thoroughly, just quickly, and got it running so we can get them some cooling. The biggest thing that started all this was when I was working on the glycol unit, it had tripped on high head pressure, and it's a little self-contained reach in downstairs, and I noticed the entire time I was working on it, ended up being a bad compressor and a bad temp control, but the entire time I was working on it, I noticed it was really hot in the kitchen. So we got our authorization, we're gonna clean these guys up now. All right, we got the top pulled off of both units. Um, this one right here, if you come over here, you see it's pretty dirty. Pretty dirty down in there. Uh, we haven't cleaned this in about a year as far as the splitting the coils. So splitting the coils is not part of our normal preventative maintenance. Customers don't wanna pay for splitting coils. So when they have you do PMs, majority of the time, they just want you to clean the surface. Um, we always give them the option, but they don't ever wanna pay for that. Our PMs are usually, you know, we quote them and they're all set prices. So this guy's kind of greasy too, so we're gonna clean this. And we went ahead and pulled the blower assembly for this one, because it was pretty dirty. Look at all the uh, belt dust that's in here. It's kind of silly how much there is. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this blower assembly too. It's got quite a bit of gunk buildup. I have two people here, so normally it's hard to pull one this big, but since I have two people, we're gonna knock this out. Um, we're spraying cleaner on this one right here right now. Getting through from both sides nice and good. Um, yeah, so we're getting along. All right, we're definitely gonna vacuum this, um, but this gives us the ability to get to the other side of the drain pen that doesn't get cleaned usually. And we're gonna clean this guy super thoroughly. So I've shown this a bunch of times, but we're using the Venom Pack. Um, we already used some of this cleaner, but we only filled it up about an inch, okay? And we've already got this whole AC. Uh, we haven't done the evaporator yet, but we've done both blower assemblies. They're soaking in cleaner right now, and then we're gonna rinse them. So that stuff lasts a long time. I really dig this stuff because 
this, you know, you take one thing up and you can clean so many coils and you don't gotta carry gallons and gallons. Like that's my coil cleaning bucket lately. It's got evap cleaner, sanitizer, all that stuff. So, all right, we're still moving along. We're gonna get some cleaner on this AC now. All right, so before I put cleaner on this coil, the first thing you do is rinse the big debris off, get the coil really wet with just normal water, try to rinse out any big debris, then put the cleaner on. So that way the cleaner has a nice smooth surface to glide across. We're gonna do the same thing for the evaporator too. I'm spraying this stuff on. I'm going a little, I'm using the B setting, which is, you know, um, the second least amount of cleaner being used, I guess is the right way to say it. So uh, I'm just gonna get it on there liberally, spray it from all sides, and then we'll let it sit for 10 minutes. Again, this stuff will not eat the condenser away, so the, the, it works by letting it sit for a while. Um, and it breaks everything down and then everything will rinse out really good. And you know, sometimes if you have a really, really greasy coil, you might have to go higher concentrations, you know? All right, some of the grease, the evaporator was pretty greased up, so I had to get some of the brightener, which is a big time heavy duty cleaner. You gotta be careful, it's non-acid, but still gotta be careful. But um, yeah, I'm using that and it's coming, coming good. Um, you gotta be very careful, but you can see the grease is really coming out of there now. So, we're gonna keep going at it. Got some on that coil too. Look at the stuff coming out of the evaporator, it's pure black. Because this is all grease. We're having to put some uh, of their brightener on there because the, the customer just has a greasy kitchen. So this is a last, last resort. You typically don't want to use this in the occupied space and you also gotta be very careful not to let the customer breathe this. I rinsed off all the heavy duty cleaners and we're spraying the evaporator cleaner on there. It'll give it a nice smell and it foams up really good too. Surprisingly, even after all the heavy duty cleaners, the evaporator cleaner's pulling stuff out of the coil too. So we're almost done. Look at the chunks of stuff that are coming out of that right now from the evaporator cleaner. It's doing a really good job too of pulling all that gunk out. So we're just about done rinsing the evaporator. The last thing we're gonna do is spray some sanitizer on this. So I've got the Viper uh, Strike Back Sanitizer. We're just gonna spray this on and you're not gonna rinse it. Uh, this, I can't, you know, I'm, I don't know. I'm on the commercial side. I'm not really selling this to my customers, but it's just kind of a cool thing to tell them that when you were all done, you sanitized it, you know. All right, last bit, we're gonna spray sanitizer on this one. and then just let it stay on there. Just spray it on anything that we're touching. As we're putting it together, we'll spray it on. And it's just peace of mind, like I said. This guy right here. And again, this is their strike back sanitizer. Comes in a concentrated thing and you just Put a few pumps, or I think it's one and a half pumps, I think, or no, it's two pumps. I have to look at the instructions, but you just gotta read the instructions, and then you fill it up with water. We're putting this back together, and uh, the old zip ties had the little hook chinguses that would go through, and when they go bad, what you can actually do is just cut off the old zip tie and still use the ratcheting part, and it'll, a new zip tie will go right through that. So then you can still secure everything. All right, see, this is what I'm talking about. So it goes nice and secure, nice and secure, and I'm doing everything I can to keep the electrical lines from rubbing out. So we'll cut all the ends off and everything. All right, we got both the units running. All compressors are running on this. There's lots of things I want to do. This condenser fan motor doesn't belong in here. Um, these things are rotted out. We taped them up for now. I'd love to change that, but you know, the customer only wants to spend so much money. If it's working, they don't want to change it. Same thing on this one, this uh, fan motor is the wrong fan motor and it's sitting way too far down. I know it doesn't look like it's running right, but it is. I'd love to change that fan motor too, but again, if it's working, you know, the customer's not gonna do it. Uh, so they're both running right now. This one's been running for about a half an hour. I'm gonna go ahead and hook up Measure Quick to it. Let this one run for a while and stabilize. And uh, we'll make sure this, I'm sure they're gonna be fine now that we cleaned them up, but I'll check it all out. All right, my unit's been running for a while right now and here's what I'm seeing. Uh, refrigerant pressures. Let me show you how I have it profiled. We've got a package unit, five tons, R22, approximately 10 to 12 sear. That's kind of what I think. All right, we're gonna hit submit. And we're gonna go through the numbers. So right now, 
We've got high suction line temp, high superheat, subcooling accordion to measure quick is on point. It's a little bit high for my uh, comfort. I'd like to see that subcooling a little bit lower personally. Um, liquid line temp is okay. Uh, saturation temp on the evaporator is a little bit cold. I would expect it. It's pretty warm inside and it's pretty warm outside. So a 35 degree evaporator seems kind of low to me. Let's keep scrolling through. Uh, outdoor air is just under 90 degrees. Discharge line temp is pretty good on point. All right, we got a 23 degree temperature split, just under 2,000 CFMs of airflow approximately. That looks pretty good to me. Um, this isn't looking completely horrible. BTU output's about 53,000, a little bit low. Okay, so. Um, I'll pull up diagnostics, but I kind of think that the unit is looking like it might be a little low on charge and that subcooling's a little bit high and I believe the reason why is because our condenser coil is damaged and that condenser fan motor is sitting too low. The fan blade is not in the shroud properly and I think we're recirculating some of the discharge air. Um, but we are going to try to bring the superheat down just a little bit. We're going to add a little refrigerant. Now, let's pull up Measure Quick's diagnostics. Suction line temperature too high system may be undercharged with refrigerant and there may be a restriction um, dirty condenser non condensables that again messed up condenser so this unit's not going to be perfect we're going to try putting a little bit refrigerant in there get the superheat down get the suction line temp down just a little bit and uh, we'll see where that gets us all right we're going to add a little gas to this bad boy we can get that superheat down a little bit so you got to do it slowly because you don't want to overcharge it so it's a little bit out of time Remember we were calling for about five degrees superheat. Probably gonna leave it about there, but let's let it run for a little while and see how it operates. All right, at this point, um, it's acting kind of interesting. See how my superheat's fluctuating like that? That's a little bit scary. Almost like there's non-condensables in there, but I don't think there is. Um, I, I put a compressor in this like a year and a half ago and nobody I don't think has worked on it since me. This is interesting. We've been seeing a lot of those dirty units like that, okay? And even though this was recorded back in June of 2020, it's still the same, you know, every restaurant I go to units are just filthy like that. It's really important using the whole big picture thing. Don't get tunnel vision. Don't go in there just just assuming things. You know, you really got to start over, right? Even if you've been servicing the restaurant for a very long time, you got to start with the basics. Airflow is king on these units. If you don't have proper airflow, everything's going to be out of whack, okay? And understand something too. Even measure quick when it does airflow, it's an estimation, okay? So you can't take it, you know, for, you know, to be 100% you know, highly, highly accurate. I mean, it's good, but you just got to kind of look at everything. Don't just assume. All right. So we got the units cleaned up. We had to start there and we make observations as we're going along. The condensers are all damaged really bad. The, the condenser fan motors are the incorrect motors. You know, the wires are sticking out. And in some cases, the, the stack on the motor is too big. So the fan blade's not sitting in the shroud properly. You know, all that stuff comes into play. And you have to remember that when you're trying to diagnose. Now, on the AC7, the small one that I was showing on Measure Quick, now that one had some interesting stuff going on with it, okay? And I didn't catch the footage uh, on film, but I actually talked to the customer and told them like, hey, you know what? I'm really leaning towards a plugged up metering device because this unit has a fixed orifice header, very notorious on these carrier units for plugging up. Um, but at the same time, we also had that condenser fan motor that was incorrect and not sitting in there correctly, not, you know, putting the fan blade in the shroud. Uh, the condenser is also highly damaged, okay? So I went ahead and gave the customer a quote to put a new condenser fan motor in there, go back with the OEM motor and blade, and then also to change uh, the, the, the liquid header, basically, um, with the fixed orifice metering devices in it. And they have never approved that. So that unit still stands, and I'm sure I'll get another video, I'll get another service call on it here come into the cooling season as we're coming out of our fake winter. Um, in California, I should say, okay, fake winter. I'm not, you, you guys know what I mean, but um, I'm sure I'll get another call on it and we'll probably have another video. Uh, sometimes the customers don't always go for the big picture repair, 
right? Those liquid uh, meter or those fixed orifice metering device headers, they're kind of a pain in the butt to change, especially on those small units. Um, actually, I've never changed one. I've, I've tried to clean them before, but I mean, it just getting in there, it's going to be a pain in the butt because you got to cut them individually, then braze them all on. It's, it's a whole process, but it's doable. But again, this customer hasn't made that decision. Um, they just basically told us they wanted to leave it be because, uh, you know, they made it through the rest of the summer and it did okay. But things like that, you know, the unit may still operate, but what's it going to lead to? It's going to lead to compressor failures and different things like that. Okay. If it's running in those bad conditions like that. So you have to, uh, understand that and remember that. And it's also best to keep good notes of the equipment. So that way, uh, you can, um, uh, remember that, you know, a year from now when I go to service it again. All right. Um, also another thing when you guys see, and I, I explain it sometimes, but sometimes I don't explain it in the videos on these carrier units and a lot of other units, you can't just get fixated on a superheat and a sub cooling number. Again, you have to look at the big picture and you have to remember something. Okay. This unit, if you guys are familiar with the carrier units, they do not have a liquid line pressure tap you're getting discharge pressure. So that subcooling number is skewed. Okay, oh, there's only a few package units that actually come with a liquid line pressure tap. So you can't just always aim for a subcooling when you're looking at these. You have to be able to think about it and be like, why is that subcooling number so weird? Oh, you know, that's discharge line pressure. And there's a pressure drop once the refrigerant goes from the compressor's discharge line through the condenser before it gets to the metering device, there's a pressure drop right there, okay? And that pressure drop is going to make the liquid line pressure uh, lower and therefore change your subcooling. So important things to think about when you're diagnosing these units, okay? Hopefully this uh, was a cool video for you guys. I really, really appreciate you making it to the end. Please, if you haven't already, consider subscribing to the HVACR Tools YouTube channel. Um, help us to grow that channel so that we can uh, really start to uh, produce more content on there, okay? Um, there's also a Patreon page for the HVACR Tools YouTube channel. Just look in the show notes. You guys can help to support the Tools channel and help us to uh, get some new cool tools to talk about, okay? Really appreciate you, and uh, we will catch you on the next one, okay?